Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about Rapido's new N-Scale Canadian sets. Now there's been some issues with rolling quality and uh, some issues with couplers that I've experienced. I don't know if others have. Uh, I'm going to break this video down into uh, part one where we talk about fixing these things. And uh, part two, if you want to stick around to the end, a slight rant on quality control, um, why we have the issues that we do, and whether or not they are as big issues as we think they are. So this rant might not go where you think it's going to go at the end, but uh, if you're curious, stick around for that. But first, let's fix the deficiencies in these cars. I want to say that the appearance of them is outstanding. These things set a new bar for N-scale passenger equipment. There is no doubt about that. Um, it's a minor fix to get these things to run as good as they look. So let's focus on the fix and then we'll focus on the rant afterwards. Let's go to the workbench. All right, so before we address rolling issues, we're gonna address some coupler issues. So my baggage car here, crew dorm. Coupler sits way down low. Okay, it's crooked. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's bent down like this. So we're gonna yank that coupler out real quick and find out why. Okay, so coupler box comes off just like a regular 1015. I don't think this is a 1015. I think it's a copy. I'm not sure. Um, They've been copying these things lately and the quality on the copies is not as good as the Microtrain stuff. So if you have issues, I change them out to Microtrains. This is a Microtrains. This is the coupler that came on the car itself. If you look, they're virtually identical. It might still work. Let's do some research here and find out what's going on. So immediately, I run this blade across here and it sticks on the end of the car. So the floor sits deeper than the end sill here. I know it's tough to see, but I'm gonna have to take some of this plastic out of here, okay? So let's do that real quick. And just slice this off. And it's not by much, it's never by much. I'm gonna take some of that plastic out of there. All right, we're gonna get this end level with the floor. And then that should eliminate our issue. So little square file. We're just going to work that back and forth. Do a final dress up. blade here all right so we'll put the 1015 in now because of this underbody detail you got your brake piping detail there or your airline piping or HEP piping I don't know what it is we're gonna put that there and we're gonna swap this coupler out just so we don't have to piss around in case it is the wrong coupler. Okay, and we'll put a microtrains back in, just like that. And we'll see what difference that makes. So, it's no longer uh, on an angle, however. It's rubbing against the bottom of the cast on diaphragm but there you go see that look works way better all right so we've got three sleepers and three separate fixes first fix very very simple but you're going to sacrifice ride height you're going to drop a 10 thou shim around that bolster pin now people are using the kd209 fiber washer for this i didn't have any so i made my own it's just a strip of 10 thou styrene with a 1 8 hole drilled through it to fit over top of there. Way you go, boom, truck goes back on, you're off to the races, your car is going to sit 10 thou higher, but you're not going to have any interference with those flanges on that bottom detail. 
Now, fix number two is the one I'm going to go with because I lower all my stuff. I don't feel like raising things back up again. I'm changing the wheels out in my cars. Okay, so I'm using the Tangent 36 inch uh, wheel. And this is a really nice, low profile, uh, narrow tread wheel. Very similar. In fact, I can't tell the difference under magnification to the BLMA slash Atlas wheel. My entire freight car fleet is standardized on BLMA slash Atlas wheels. So this is a great option for me. However, I'm gonna give up lighting effects. Now, none of my passenger cars have lighting effects, so that doesn't matter to me. My layout's lit so I can look at it, not so I can turn it off and uh, watch things blast around in the dark. With using these wheels, because they're insulated differently, they have a metal axle that runs right through and one insulated wheel, you got to be sure you get the insulated wheel to the same side of the truck, otherwise you're going to get a short circuit. In fact, you want it to the same side of the car. So, if you have a tough time seeing the bushing that insulates that wheel, there's a simple solution. You put both of the uh, wheels in the truck, you have to keep the contact strips, okay? Because that's where you get your axle spacing from. Put both of those uh, wheels in the truck, drop the truck on the track. If you have a short circuit, you have to flop one uh, axle around. Put both trucks after doing that in on the car. Put the car on the track. If the tr car shorts out, you're gonna have to pull one of the trucks off. Now these trucks are keyed, they only fit on one way. So you can't just flop the truck around, you're gonna to have to flop the axles around in one truck. Now the other option, which is gonna uh, limit any kind of retrofitting of the car if you wanna go back to lighting, is you could just cut off these contact points here, then you don't have to worry about that, okay? But you're sacrificing lighting, as I said. Third option, and I did this before I did this, okay? so. I wanted to come up with something where I could keep lighting effects and not have to raise the car up. I put on the truck and of course it bumped against the bottom of the floor there. So I took a Dremel and I made a cavity underneath each wheel in the, in the underframe, got rid of that detail and I had no problems with the, the flanges rubbing on the floor. However, when uh, testing that out, rolled the car back and forth, the axles were hitting the center sill. So, back to the drawing board, off we go. Trucks uh, was on here like this. I took a number 11 blade and I just scribed a line in the center sill like that on each side of the axles, both sides of the truck. And then I took a round file, it's here somewhere, and between those lines I just filed a divot or a groove in that center sill to clear the axles, then that truck went back on. In this instance, this is the nuclear option, obviously. You don't sacrifice ride height and you don't sacrifice lighting. So there's three to choose from. This one's the simplest. You're gonna just sacrifice a little bit of ride height, but you're gonna keep your lighting. This one here, very simple as well. You're gonna keep the ride height. You're gonna get a finer wheel because these are nicer wheels than the Rapido ones nice uh, lower flange so it doesn't uh, interfere with that floor. No lighting, but you're gonna keep that nice low ride height and a better wheel. This one here, you're gonna keep your ride height and you're gonna keep your lighting effects. Well, there you go, relatively easy fix to get these cars not just looking like 10 out of 10s, but running like 10 out of 10s. The question remains, should we have to do that? Ideally, no, we shouldn't have to do that. Quality control would be better. This would have been picked up. There would have been shims underneath these trucks and we wouldn't be having this discussion. However, realistically, yes, we do. 10 years ago, we couldn't have even thought about having a prototype specific Canadian in Anscale and here it is. So with a little bit of work, we have a 10 out of 10 model. So as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing to be squawking about here. Uh, put it into perspective. My entire freight car fleet, 450, 500 cars roughly, there's only seven cars that I haven't had to mill bolsters, change coupler pockets, put new coupler pockets on, change wheels, trucks, etc, etc, etc. So a few shims and a few wheels under this is nothing to squawk about. Now, I'm not absolving anyone here of uh, any kind of issues, not putting out the perfect product, but let's put things again into a different perspective. The reason that we have such good stuff is because it's a different market now. The market's being driven by model train buyers versus model railroaders. And when that expectation of perfection isn't met, the disappointment is way up there. So 
I suggest we try to get back to model railroaders where we understand that there's a little bit of work involved and some modeling skill required to get the things that we want versus just buying them out of the box. These things out of the box without touching them are still a seven and a half to eight out of 10. With a tiny bit of work, they're a 10 out of 10. We got nothing to squawk about.